Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, today we are starting a new chapter from corporate accounts that is underwriting of shares and debentures. Now this chapter underwriting is a very simple and short chapter. So now let's start this chapter with the help of a small example to understand the concept of underwriting. Now let's say there is a company called ABC. There is a company called ABC and let's say this is a new company. Right? This is a new company. Now this company wants to go public. It wants to issue shares to the public. It wants to issue shares to the public. Now tell me, is it an easy job to issue shares to the public? Of course not. It's not an easy job to issue shares to the public. Why? Because there is a big risk. There is a big risk. What risk? The risk of the risk of non-subscription, right? The risk of non-subscription. The risk of non-subscription. What if the shares issued by this ABC company directly into the market are not subscribed by the public? What if they are? not subscribed by the public if they are not subscribed by the public then what will happen then whatever the reputation whatever the value whatever the name of this company is there in the market that goodwill that reputation that goodwill or that reputation will fall down isn't it of course it will in the eyes of public in the eyes of investors everyone will start to think why the shares of this company were not subscribed in the market right and there's also another rule in the Companies Act 2013 which says if 90% of shares issued, 90% of shares issued, if they are not subscribed, if 90% of shares issued are not subscribed, right? If they are not subscribed within 120 days, within 120 days, then what happens? then whatever money the company has received by application by share applications which is below 90 percent of course like 70 80 60 then that application money the entire amount has to be it has to be refunded it has to be refunded back to the public yes that's the rule of companies act 2013 indian companies act 2013 says if 90% of shares issued are not subscribed within 120 days then whatever amount has been received from the public it has to be refunded back completely so that's a big problem of issuing shares directly to the public directly into the market so now to overcome this risk to what to overcome to overcome this risk what the company does is the company goes for underwriting of shares and debentures. Now, what is meant by underwriting of shares and debentures? See, now this ABC company, what it does is it doesn't go for this direct issue into the market. It doesn't do that because there's a big risk of non-subscription and as well as this rule. So to overcome this risk, what this company does is this company goes to certain financial institutions or certain persons all right now let's say it goes to certain persons x y and let's say z okay z all right x y and z now this company abc goes to these persons and now this also can be joint stock company okay i'm just telling you joint stock company it can be partnership okay partnership firm it can be bank all right it can be a bank or any other financial institution it can be anything now here these are persons okay x y and z now let's say this company wants to issue 100,000 shares okay 100,000 shares now what this company does is this company enters into an agreement with certain persons this company enters into an agreement with certain persons or certain financial institutions certain banks certain partnership firms certain any company okay any financial institutions and what these persons do is what this party does is here there are three persons okay x wife and z what they are doing is they are guaranteeing the abc company that certain amount of shares will be subscribed they will convince the public to subscribe to a certain number of shares 
Now here, let's say X said to the ABC company that I'm taking the responsibility of 50,000 shares. I'm taking the responsibility of 50,000 shares and Y told I'm taking the responsibility of 30,000 shares and Z told I'm taking the responsibility of 20,000 shares. All right. 50,000, 30,000 and 20,000. Now what exactly they told? X said, I am taking the responsibility of 50,000 shares. I will try to convince the public to subscribe to these shares of your company. Okay. And if now, now they are guaranteeing, okay. They are guarantee, giving the guarantee that I will bring the public to subscribe to 50,000 shares. Okay. They are giving the guarantee. Who is giving? X, Y, and Z are giving the guarantee to the ABC company. Now X is saying, I will bring the public to subscribe 50,000 shares. I will try to convince them. And if they subscribe only, let's say 40,000 shares, then the remaining 10,000 shares, the remaining 10,000 shares will be taken up by me. I will take up the remaining shares. I will subscribe to remaining shares. I will purchase the remaining shares. That is what X is saying. Similarly, these two persons are also saying the same thing. Y is saying I'm taking the responsibility of 30,000 shares and I will try to convince the public to purchase these 30,000 shares. And if they purchase less than 30,000, let's say 29,000, then 1,000 shares will be taken up by me. And Z also says the same thing. If 19,500 shares are subscribed by the public and I will try to convince them very hard and if only 19,500 shares are taken by the public, then the remaining 500 shares will be taken up by me. Okay, I will subscribe or purchase the share. That is what's meant by, that is what is meant by taken up. Okay, so here these persons are giving the guarantee of public subscription to ABC company. And if the public subscription doesn't happen completely, then the remaining shares will be taken up by us. Okay, don't worry. They are giving the insurance like, you know, they are giving the guarantee assurance to ABC company of public subscription. Now tell me, will these persons or banks or whatever they are, partnership, joint stock company or any financial institution, will they do this for free? Yeah, will they do this for free? Of course not. They will not do this for free. No one does that. They will expect something in return. So this ABC company will give them what? It will give them commission. Okay. And the Companies Act 2013 says there is a restriction on commission. The commission is restricted. Now the commission can be given only up to, okay, only up to, okay, 5% on shares maximum, okay, 5% on shares and 2. 5% on debentures on debentures 2.5% because here the risk is less so the return or commission is also less here the risk is more on shares so the commission is also more and always remember okay the percentage is on the issue price on the issue price okay and the commission will be received by these underwriters this party is called underwriters because they are taking the responsibility right for the public subscription so they are underwriters they are called underwriters and they can be joint stock company any financial institution partnership firm banks anything they can be okay now here there are persons here individual persons and these are well reputed persons okay they have good contacts and everything and they are confident of 50,000 shares here 30,000 here 20,000 and they will try to get the public to subscribe to these shares if it doesn't happen, then they'll have to take up or purchase these shares from their own pocket. This is what is meant by underwriting of shares and debentures. Now debentures are the same thing. Okay. So this is what is meant by underwriting of shares and debentures. Now let's take the same previous example of ABC company to understand few more things about underwriting. Now what happened in that example that ABC company issued 1 lakh shares and these shares were underwritten by X, Y and Z. X took the responsibility of 50,000 shares and Y took the responsibility of 30,000 shares and Z took the responsibility of 20,000 shares. Now this was the agreement made between ABC company and X, Y and Z the underwriters. Now let's see what actually happened. See what actually happened was the ABC company, right? The ABC company got subscriptions for subscriptions for 80,000 applications, 80,000 shares. 
okay 80,000 shares now tell me is there a deficiency or not of course there is deficiency 1 lakh was issued 80,000 has been received but now how will the ABC company will know that how much shares have come through each of the underwriters now X took the responsibility of 50,000 Y took the responsibility of 30,000 and Z took the responsibility of 20,000 now we want to know the ABC company want to know how much applications have come through each of the underwriters now all the applications are same right are they same no they are not same how how they are not same because all the applications are being received by the ABC company but they are not same because here the problem arises of identification the identification of the application because the company should know right how much applications have come through each of the underwriters because all of them have tried to convince the public right now the problem arises of identification see to identify each of the applications what these each of the underwriters will do is at the below they will put a stamp they will put what they will put a stamp like x and the y will put his own stamp and z will put his own stamp okay to identify and differentiate the applications so the company can know the company can know this much applications have come through x this much applications have come through y this much applications have come through z okay you understood and these applications which have marks on them or stamps on them are called as they are called as marked applications they are called as marked applications all right they are marked with stamp or a written text okay reference through x reference through y or reference through z okay like that now here for example let's say let's say okay from x 40,000 were received okay from x and from y how did the company came to know because of this marked applications and then from Z, let's say 10,000, okay, 10,000 from Z and 40,000 from X and Y full, 30,000. So 40 plus 30, 70, 70 plus 10, 80,000. So total 80,000 shared applications were received. And how it was identified? It was identified through these marked applications. And there's also one more thing, okay, unmarked applications. Now what is unmarked applications now the applications now the company will not trust this underwriter the company will not trust these underwriters because everyone makes mistakes right everyone fails in their jobs so what the company will do is company will go out of the box and company will directly go to the public and it will try to get the shares subscribed by its own way and the application which it will receive would be unmarked application because it has come through the efforts of the company through the efforts of the company so it will not bear any stamp or any mark so it will be called as unmarked applications why company does this because company doesn't trust underwriters the company will go separately and will try to get its own subscriptions okay and those application will be called as unmarked application but the benefit of unmarked application will be given to these underwriters because the entire issue was underwritten right the entire contract was given to these underwriters and if the company goes out of the box then the company will not get credit for that that credit will be given for x y and z okay we'll see that later in the later in solving problems and there's also two types of contract in underwritings okay two types of contract the one is the normal contract which we saw in the previous example as well, as well as over here the that is that is normal okay normal contract normal contract and there is one more contract which we will see later that is called as firm underwriting that is called as firm underwriting now here what happens is the underwriters at the beginning itself beginning itself says i'm very interested in your company and i want to purchase the shares first from your company okay so the in the beginning only the underwriter will uh, tell to the company that they want to purchase the shares because they are interested in the prospects of the company 
so that is what is meant by firm underwriting the firm of the underwriter will be interested in the in the company and they will take the shares in the beginning itself irrespective of public subscription the public subscribes or not the underwriters will take the share that is what is meant by firm underwriting we'll see that later in detail okay firm underwriting but i just want to tell you that there are two types of contract in underwriting one is normal contract which is this okay here whatever liability arises at last now here you see 40000 shares have come from x and 10000 have come from z so here you see there is deficiency of 10000 yeah 10,000 and here there is also deficiency of 10,000 so this is what we have to find this is gross liability and then this much was received through each underwriters whatever deficiency is there that deficiency we have to find out okay that is the main purpose of this chapter we have to find out the net liability how much each underwriter has to bring from his own pocket that is what we have to find the entire mission of this chapter is to find out the net liability See here, 50,000, 40,000, 20,000, 10,000. He promised to bring 20,000 but brought only 10,000. Now he has to purchase 10,000 shares and here X has to purchase 10,000 shares through his own pocket because he promised us, he gave the guarantee to the ABC company that he will bring 50,000 and if it doesn't and if public doesn't subscribe, then he has to purchase those shares, okay? So that is what is meant by underwriting. So this is the complete idea about the underwriting. And there are two applications, marked applications and unmarked applications. Marked applications mean they have marks like stamps or any text on them. That is what is meant by marked application. And unmarked application doesn't contain any form of stamp or any mark. And they are got through the efforts of the company because company goes out of the box to get public subscription. So unmarked application means no stamp nothing on it all right so unmarked applications marked applications and two types of contract normal contract and firm underwriting we will see the firm underwriting in another video and we'll also solve the problem on firm underwriting it's very simple and here we find only the net liability okay that is the main mission of this chapter easy right so we'll solve a problem in the next video